Hi. Can you hear me? Hi. How are you? I'm good. I'm so happy to see you. Look at you, Tamlin. <laughs> You're so adorable still. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, listen, first of all, congratulations on Ordinary Angels. Once Thank again, you. you guys, once again. Okay, you know, I have to say this because your resume is just so long. There's no one could get it away in 10 minutes that we're talking. But I have noticed with all of these major projects, with every major artist uh, in our generation and on the planet, including Hillary Swank, who we're going to talk about in a minute, you elevate their performance. How does that always happen? Oh, that is a huge compliment. Thank you. I true. I, you know what I do when I get in the scene? I do what Jennifer Lewis taught me to do. I've been in every acting class I have, and I've learned a lot. But the school of Jennifer Lewis taught me, <laughs> hey, do you believe that coming out your mouth? If you don't believe it, nobody else will. I live by that. So I try to deliver the lines as as seamless and natural as I could. And if that helps elevate, I am honored. But I got that from Miss Lewis. <laughs> wow. Well, you know what? She's a great person to really get advice from at any time of the day. And you do elevate. I think, you know, that's probably why you're in everybody's show. You've been in every major show. You've been in every major movie with everybody. <laughs> So that's why, because you elevate them. Just so in case you didn't know, I wanted you to know that. Thank you. So anyway, so in this particular one, you're starring opposite Hillary Swank and um, and our guy. Oh, gosh. Um, uh, Alan. Alan Richson. What a, what a great movie this is. Tell me about your, your uh, role as Rose in the movie. And first of all, let's say it's based on a true story. Yes. And it's yes. one of those movies where everybody should have their handkerchief ready because you're going to shed a tear or two. Okay. Now that being said, tell me about Rose. Uh, I, I, I fell in love with Rose. I think we all could use a friend like Rose. Um, she is a ride or die. She will go to the ends of the earth for Sharon. But one thing she will not do is hop on her chaos train. She is a no nonsense, uh, woman. Um, but she's non-judgmental. She's very warm and she knows, okay, you might be going through something right now. However, this is not good for you. And I'm not gonna let you destroy yourself. And if you keep doing this, you're not gonna be here anymore. So no, but on the other hand, this is what you wanna do. Why do you wanna do that? You're not even together yourself. I love how she loves I mean, uh, Sharon. I love how she loves the character of Sharon. She's to the point where I want to love you. I want to be there for you. And I want to support you in everything that you do. But we need to get you together. But what I also love is how Sharon understands everything that Rose is trying to convey to her, but also lets Rose know, hey, I get it. And you're right but it is not just about me. Do you see this little girl is going to die if we don't help her? And that is impactful, especially for right now, you know, um, which I hope people take away from the movie. We've all been through a traumatic time with the pandemic. Uh, we've all put these walls up of protection and we've all cornered ourselves and separated ourselves from one another. And we can't do that. We need, we need each other. We need community. We need to have stronger faith and understand that whatever hard time we're all facing or could have been facing, that's going to pass. Um, Ed didn't ask for help. Someone wrote about Ed's story and someone read Ed's story. But I hope and pray that people start and learn how to ask for help. If we don't hear you, we don't help you you know that's yeah that's very true and and this is like i said it's based on a true story of a man whose five-year daughter was uh needed a transplant an organ transplant and she was gonna die if she didn't get it and like most men 
who try to take care of their families, they don't want to ask for help because, you know, whatever that male thing is, uh, you know, they, they got it and they just don't want people, they don't want to have to ask for help. It's okay, even for men. But I think you're right. We, we're now in a new stage where everybody in the world seems to be topsy-turvy and everybody seems to not feel too good about life and themselves in the future. And I'm not sure why. I mean, I guess I do know why, because we did come out of this pandemic. But all of that being said, we've got to move forward. How does Ordinary Angels help the audience and anyone who sees this move forward? Well, the fact that it's based on a true story is therapeutic enough to know that a family actually did go through this and actually came out all right. Um, I, I hope that, that that part registers, that we will be given obstacles and challenges until the day we die. It's all about mm-hmm. how you deal with them. And you're right, men um, operate from a place of ego and, and it's not their fault. They have been bred to be tough and to have to have that thick skin and uh, it's all right, it's just, it hurts right now, but it'll go away. No, that, <laughs> is, that has to change. Um, and it is changing. I have started to see a lot more men learn that vulnerability does not equal weakness. It's, it equals speaking your truth and, and um, acknowledging how you feel as a person. Wow. Well, good for you. I can't wait to see for this. I've actually started watching the movie. I have not seen the whole thing. They just sent it to me. But um, this is going to be a good one. And it's so important important at this time of the year. You know, today we happen to be taping this on uh, Ash Wednesday. So that means, that means me, oh gosh, Easter's coming up. <laughs> That's coming up soon. Um, so we're around that holiday time, the high holidays. And so, you know, the message I think is important. All of that being said, what do you want the audience to know about you and what's coming up next for you? Because I got to tell you, like I said, your resume, you work, you work with everybody and you're working on everything at the same time. I don't know how you do it. Oh, I love, I love acting. I love the craft. I, I've been in love with this since I was a little girl, um, doing the opening of fame in my backyard. I used to do it every day I could until grandma was like, all right, y'all stop all that noise out there. But, um, <laughs> I... I love acting and I will audition and do whatever. My uh, project that I love, I I was on uh, Uncoupled playing Tisha Campbell's best friend um, uh, last year and they've asked me to come back this year. I also work on 911 Lone Star. Uh, I will definitely be back on (laughs) this year as well. Um, So those are my two gigs. I know I got lined up for the rest. I'm still auditioning. I'm I'm trying to get it together. and I do appreciate the audition process. I really do. Do you? What do you appreciate about that? I, I you know, I've never wanted to be an actor because that just was not my thing. But part of it was like, who wants to go in there and get rejected all the time? How do you do that? I mean, I really don't. Well, know. I mean, part of your rejection most of the time has nothing to do with your performance. It has to do oh, with putting the, a cast together. So if you take that out of the equation as an artist, your feelings won't get so hurt all the time about that word, no, uh, which I hear very often. Um, but I appreciate the audition process because one, even if I don't book the job, I book the room and I end up meeting some interesting producers and directors and writers from something that I didn't book and they, they remember me and they're like, oh, we'll call Tamala for this. Um, so there's that uh, little jewel that you get from auditioning. And secondly, I feel it keeps your your skills sharpened. You know, as you start working more and more, you can't always get to an acting workshop or an acting class. Um, so when you audition, you're you're reading all these different characters. That's some of your homework you would get in a workshop, um, and it just keeps you sharp. You know, you get to play all these different characters uh, and hope that you get them. And if you don't, it's like, okay, why didn't I get that? And then you see the person that did, you're like, oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> they gave you something you just did. Or, you know, or you, they were put together because they fit the rest of the cast, you know? Um, yeah. There's a combination, but I just, I love acting. I just do. 
Well, you know, the good news is that we have really reached a point in history where it doesn't seem to matter what age you are even anymore, even for women, as much as it used to, you can keep doing not that not that you're even anywhere close to that, but 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 you can keep going in a variety of ways. Also, for African American women, though, has how is it these days, you know, we keep saying, okay, we make strides and then, you know, two steps forward, three steps back. Where, in your opinion, where are we in terms of African American women on screen and behind screen in this business right now? In this business right now, we need some repair work. We need some repair work. But we also, as women, need to come together and rally and put that in motion. Because individually, yeah, they hear us, but they don't hear us. You can get more done Mm -hmm. if you have the numbers. And I feel that if we all come together and say, hey, we're not satisfied with these couple of things, and we go to our union as a whole and say, hey, this ain't working for us no more. And we've been doing this since since I don't know when. It's time to change. Last hundred and some years. (laughs) Yes. Um, We need to strongly consider that, uh, both in this career and outside of this career. we are so busy. Women are so magical. We are goddesses. We handle so many things at at one time. Multitasking. We invented that word, multitasking. But we can, <laughs> we can handle this too. We can take time, and if we if we want to see change, and we can come together. We you got a lot of sororities that are sisters. You can call your soror sisters up and be like, "Hey, we want to put something together. We need to organize." And as women, we do that automatically. So I feel that that's next on the agenda for us as African-American women in this business and also in outside of this business in a regular office space. You know, there's things that need to be changed. Maybe we can get together and inspire that as well. But change needs to happen. We've done it long enough. Absolutely. Absolutely. (laughs) So well said. Can I give you an applause on that one? I got to ask you about Hillary Swank. Because Hillary is one of my all-time favorite actresses. I mean, she just brings it every single thing she does. So working with her, what did you what did little tidbits did you pick up from her and what did you share with her that she's probably gonna use in her next project? I I first of all I had to calm down because I was fangirling over Hillary Swank. I was like, I can't believe I'm about to do a scene with Million Dollar Baby. I can't believe I'm <laughs> do a scene with boys don't cry Hillary Swank I just can't I had to like calm down and center myself and and do it and what I really loved and that I learned about Hillary was and I already had great set etiquette but I like how inclusive she was with everyone down to our director of photography Maya um I wish Ben Kovic Ben Kovic um the fact that she was a, a female DP, a uh, Hillary sang her praises and made sure that everything was mm-hmm. the way it was supposed to be. But in credit to our director, John Gunn, he had all of it ironed out. He made sure all the ladies were comfortable and oh. and uh, everything was done in a timely fashion and in order. And he was able to tell his story the way he needed it told and for us to get our performances the way they needed to be in all fairness. And in all good time, so I learned very businessy with Hillary and and John. More business. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, you will continue to do well and represent us the way you always have, uh, in such a wonderful, wonderful manner. And what would you say to everybody out there about tuning in and, and watching and streaming and going to the theater and wherever you have to go to see Ordinary Angels? Uh, please come out and see the movie. It is a rewarding for your spirit, for your energy. You will come out so uplifted and hopefully inspired to become an ordinary angel yourself. Um, This movie has so many different levels of emotion. I I feel like it's almost a therapeutic session. You're going to therapy. Mm -hmm. You will release and you will come out like tons of weights have been lifted off of you. That's how I felt watching the movie. And I hate watching myself. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you always look great. Thank you so much. You come back and join us anytime. 
Because I know you've got something coming up in the next couple of weeks, because you always do. <laughs> we'll see. From your lips to God's ears. But I would like to say one more thing. Um, we are raising money for families. The, the film itself is raising uh, money for families that cannot pay those outrageous hospital bills. And we would like people to donate just $1 at ordinaryangels.movie is the website you can go to ordinaryangels.movie one dollar we turn into a hundred dollars our goal is to raise 10 million we've already raised a lot of money uh, but we're still not at our goal so if you have it if you don't we understand but if you do can we get a dollar please <laughs> oh how wonderful <laughs> and yes we will promote that as, as long well, along with the film just so you know, because so it's much. so important. It is just, it's unbelievably important. And you're so right. You know, healthcare is just out of reach for a lot of people. And especially when you're talking organ donation. So yeah, we got you on that one. Not Thank to worry. You. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Have a great I one. Say one more thing just to you. You look so good and so beautiful. I mean, you have stopped. I don't know what you're taking. Please uh, pass them my way. <laughs> I call it God and good genes. I love it. <laughs> Thank you, darling. Love you Thank much. You. Good to see you. Good to see you, too.